We all misbehave sometimes Wanna change the world Indulge in some bad behavior Hello and welcome to Bad Behavior Podcast where we talk about women, activism and positive change and our journey to becoming the best, baddest bitches that we can be. I'm Rosalind. I'm Nicola. I'm Chedgy. Our editor Chedgy is back. Yes, due to popular demand, our editor slash producer is back. How you been, Chedge? I'm doing all right. How are y'all doing? Oh, we're good. I mean, I'm good. How are you, Ros? <laughs> <laughs> Answering for me. I'm really well. Thank you, guys. I've had a number of epiphanies this week. Oh, wow. Which I won't talk about because it's been... It's been too many. It's becoming a reoccurring theme every week, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I need to calm down and check myself. But look, in the end, I'm living my life and... You're thriving. Now tell me this, Rosalind. How have you been bad this week? Well, it was a bit of an epiphany, if I'm honest, but it's got action behind it as Yay. well. So I feel like it, it's okay. I've moved on. So a little... I used to study creative writing at university and I loved it. I love writing. It's one of my passions. If I couldn't do it, I would not be me. But I stopped writing poetry because I did a few poetry classes that ruined it for me because it was this like fun thing that I did and suddenly it had to be really technical and full on and analysed. It kind of drained the love I had for it you know what I mean so I haven't written proper poetry for a long time I normally just write songs which is a form of poetry to music I suppose but this week I actually started writing some poems again because I guess I got angry enough at the world that I (laughs) wanted to put it in that form and I also love illustrating so I did a few illustrations on them and I found that I really love it it's I forgot how much I loved it and how much I should keep doing it so that was my bad behavior I kind of said fuck you to my old poetry teacher who killed it for me and I refound a passion how have you been bad Nicola well so mine is not similar <laughs> to yours I did not rediscover a passion I just finished reading one of the most incredible books that I have ever read, Half the Sky. It's a book written by husband and wife team Nicholas Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn, who are one of the best power couples that I've ever experienced in my life. So I read this book, you know, it's been a hard couple of weeks, I would say, just with what's been happening in the media, with the racially motivated killings of Nia Wilson and the beautiful girl in Melbourne, LaChole, and all those, just all the shitty stuff that you have to see day to day. And so this book was like a nice call to arms, and I would definitely recommend it for anyone who wanted to feel motivated to actually be able to use feminism productively and in a global setting so it was is it about feminism or the byline of it is turning oppression into opportunity for women worldwide the thing that I love the most about it is it talks about some really amazing not-for-profits and it names names it highlights really great women who have done incredible work in developing countries and then at the back of the book it has basically like this glossary of every single not-for-profit how you can contact them how you can volunteer with them so you've read this book and you're like yes I want to do something and then it gives you all the keys to like donate volunteer sign petitions yeah read it guys half the sky okay half the sky yes it was published ages and ages ago I don't know how it took me this long to find it but I would 100% recommend it it's one of the best books I've ever read just because you came to something later it doesn't negate how powerful it was for you thank you you so much for that tidbit it's like how I only recently saw part of an episode of the Simpsons and what did you think um It wasn't good, right? It was fine. What episode did you watch? No, I want to hear about how you've been bad this week. Okay, so how I've been bad this week actually is related to what you guys are going to be discussing later. It's about Mm. YouTube. So for those of you who have not seen my glorious picture up on our Instagram, at Bad Behavior Podcast, I am, I'm chocolate. (laughs) Yes. Dark, dark chocolate. Keep going. (laughs) Anyway. I just wanted to say that's hilarious. And I'm black, basically. (laughs) So my hair is, it's kinky, it is coily. Afros are now, like, the norm. Like, a lot of people will see them in adverts. You know, that girl who's on her cell phone laughing at her, you know, whatever the cell phone plan or clothing line that she's selling at. But back in the day, it wasn't really a common thing to see lots of 
women of African descent having afros, a lot of women would chemically treat their hair. So it'd be straight, relaxed. You know, even when I was younger, I used to get my hair relaxed just because it was, I guess... It, it was like a beauty standard. Like straight hair was a beauty standard, but then it became normalized to this idea that it's just easier to deal with straight hair than it is, you know, Afro hair, which is still true. Like, you know, it's much easier to brush your hair than having to sit there and comb out, you, you know, your tangles. I never really liked relaxing my hair. Relaxing my hair was one of those things I did because it was like, this is just normal. To relax is like, it's like a chemical, right? That straightens your hair permanently well not permanently it does grow so it'll like straighten up like your new growth so i just kept my hair straightened because i thought beauty hair standards this is what i need to do i remember a period of time thinking to myself i need to find a way that i can take care of my own natural hair i want that information so naturally you go to google i didn't find anything this was probably like early 2000 i couldn't find anything so i kept my hair straight because i thought well there's nothing out there for me a couple of years later probably around 2008 i thought let me go back onto the web and try find something and i went to youtube and i found the start of this like natural hair sort of YouTube channels were starting and a lot of these women were like going through the process of this was like their first time to like dealing with their own hair without chemical straighteners. I have YouTube to thank for that because there are so many women I followed on there. Like if you had looked at my YouTube account in the past it was like all hair channels I was following. All those women from the early days of like the natural hair YouTube channels helped me along. Yeah, basically it was just self-acceptance. That's beautiful. How empowering is that? And that's so cool that you can look in the mirror and like conjure up all those images of those badass women back in the day doing cool things with their natural hair. I love it. And I love it because like it's so easy for beauty standards to be so homogenized. You know, the idea of beauty seems so rigid sometimes with what people should look like and it's not true you know i love your hair right now you were rocking it well that brings us to our topic our topic is youtubers i feel like i would not have half of my time catered for if youtube was not around (laughs) perhaps i'd get more done who knows but we love it so nicola i would love to hear about your woman that you've chosen for us today okay so The stage is mine. I'm setting the stage. The curtain comes up. The lights are set. Yes. Imagine the curtains being drawn away. Yeah. A cello plays in the background. Haunting music. Go, smoke machine. Mirrors are along the back wall. A woman in a Grecian gown. A single light on her face looking dreamily out into the audience. Piercingly. (laughs) Am I ever going to be able to tell my own story or are you just going to narrate it for me? I feel like we were setting the atmosphere. Like, atmosphere is important. Atmosphere is important. So, I'm in a gown. There's a cello playing. I step forward and now let me tell you the story of Grace Victory. One of the most baddest bitches that I have ever come across in my life. (laughs) This is one of those cool instances where I didn't have to do that much research because I have followed this girl for a long time and so I casually know a lot of shit about her life, you know, just passively know who she is, where she lives, like what her sister's name, all that kind of stuff. So she is very, very cool. To give you a bit about her early life, so she grew up on a council estate. She's from Britain and she grew up on a council estate with her mother and her sister. She had a very intensely turbulent childhood, which actually included being raped at 16. And basically, one of the most incredible things about her is that she says that without my childhood, I wouldn't be where I am today. I turned my pain into passion. And that is evident with everything that she does. So that's really all the context that you need for her early life. And now she has emerged out of all that painful shit and she's her little tagline that she's known as is she's kind of the internet's big sister that's what she's that's what people call her which is so cute that's so cute I know how lovely is that so she's extremely open and honest about a lot of things so it's particularly um about her issues with an eating disorder body image issues and her experience with domestic violence she's a plus size woman of color and she is so empowering to see in 
you know, the choices that she makes with fashion and with her makeup and her hair, just everything she does, she does with no shame at all and so much self-love. So she likes to talk about a lot of taboo subjects. She has a YouTube channel, of course, and a very successful YouTube channel. And she focuses on that channel on a lot of plus size fashion and the importance of self-care too. So on her YouTube channel, she has 30 million total views, which is insane. and incredible. So she has done incredible things with this channel. She's been voted best YouTuber for Cosmopolitan Magazine, most inspiring role model for InStyle Magazine, and she's also kind of made the transition into documentary filmmaking too. So she has two documentaries at the moment, and the first one was Clean Eating Dirty Secrets, so it was um, her adventures into the whole world of clean eating, Um, and it was a BBC producer documentary that she was the host on and it's so interesting and cool because it's the other side of the whole wellness journey that everyone promotes so intensely these days and then the next one that she did was the cost of cute the dark side of the puppy trade So very diverse back catalogue. She's, you know, talking about some really intense stuff. Then she has a book too. How cool. So she has No Filter, An Uncensored Guide to Life from the Internet's Big Sister. I have read it. I loved it. It's super funny. It's just really charming and heartwarming. And oh, I just, I can't even describe how much I love this girl. So she is an ambassador for Feel Unique, which is a really cool clothing brand that caters to plus size women. And she's also a partner for Nike Women too. She's done some shit. She looks so good in like sporty chic fashion. Like she, I swear she's one of the pioneers of sporty chic fashion. She looks incredible. And recently she's kind of made the transition to talking about how to heal trauma and more spiritual stuff. So she has an Instagram, another Instagram page called Heal, Grow, Glow. And here to encourage you to heal your trauma, grow through pain, glow on to love life so it's it's like this whole journey that she's going through right now and she's sharing it really openly because she has had a lot of past trauma and she still has to deal with it you know as people with trauma do one thing I love about her vlogs is she shows you how she makes her like self-love baths she'll like run a bath for herself and then put like rose petals and all these natural earth ingredients and like crystals and it just looks so beautiful and comforting and I just want to jump right in you know like I could do with a bath like that seriously I think baths in general are just like the best thing ever light some aromatherapy candles and just lie back and think of nothing exactly and she's grace victory is all over that shit and you know her instagram honestly I would recommend anyone to look at it because she is fierce like her fashion choices are beyond and she just emits this otherworldly type of presence so what I wanted to quickly touch on was she recently she's been getting a lot of media for posting a picture of her when she was on her period and so it's her on a bed she's lying on a bed not facing the camera and she there's a period stain on the bed which you know it's happened to all of us that's generally a thing that happens when you bleed every month sometimes it gets places where it shouldn't be and she lost a thousand followers over a thousand followers for this picture that she posted and she had the most beautiful caption for it which was a poem that she'd written and it said for the redness turns to shame and the inner peace blends to hate and the sweetness of chocolate to cure the pain does nothing so she just got catapulted into a whole media circus about it because she got so much hate Like, people were so horrible about it and she lost so many followers because everyone just couldn't deal with this photo blood on a, a woman on her period. So in response to all this, she quoted this really cool poet. Uh, Naira Wahid and it says I bleed every month and I do not die how am I not magic how good is that response though that's just so true like how am I not magic I love that mentality one of my favorite things I think it's like a t-shirt slogan honestly I'm not sure maybe it's a quote from someone but thing where it's like anything you can do I can do bleed <laughs> oh I love my that. god that's so good and it's so true isn't it it's this unspoken thing where you, you're in a room full of badass women and, like, most likely one or two or more 
will be bleeding at the time and still rocking their lives. Wasn't there like a controversy a couple of years ago that another lady did that? She took a picture of herself, I think, turned away from the camera and she was bleeding. Like a blood stain on the back of her panty. Yeah, on her tracksuit. Yes, and then Instagram deleted the whole thing and you're just like, come on, people. Like, stop. Yeah. I know. It's just one of the most basic things that people could catch up with. You know what I mean? Like, it's such a simple thing that everyone could just be okay with. And it, it's just not. We talked about this in, in another episode, I'm sure, where we just talked about how it's just this taboo subject where you're not supposed to mention it. You're not supposed to bring it up. And it's, it's bizarre because it's, it's so for weird. many women, it is a week of every month. Yeah. Like, that is a lot of time. I know. Well, I always think of one of my most early feminist awakings was when I read If Men Could Menstruate, which is one of the greatest pieces ever written. And that kind of sealed the whole deal for me, because if men could menstruate, god damn, the world would be be a different place. But um, anyways, back to Grace Victory. She's super candid and being unabashedly mm. feminist and posit- body positive and just confident. And I adore her. That is what I can say. Like, I actually adore her. I think she's incredible. So that is Grace Victory. Please go check her out, guys. Boss ass bitch. Now I want to hear about your woman. So I'm really excited yes. about this. I'm going to be talking about Ari Fitz, and I am obsessed with her. I love her so much. If I ever met her, I would probably be nonverbal, which is fine. A bit embarrassing. So normally I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to meet these people. Maybe not. Uh, (laughs) Um, So Ari is a YouTuber. She's a model. She's a writer, a filmmaker. She's also a reality TV star. She was on MTV The Real World. Explosion 2014. She loves traveling. She's got a really interesting point of view on the world. So I'm going to tell you a bit about her story. Get comfortable, everyone. (laughs) So... Ari became a vlogger when she was 23 and she decided to do it and she went shopping for wallpaper and found like the ugliest pink one (laughs) and used that (laughs) and then she just never stopped. So she had a nine to five, but she quit in 2016 and moved to LA to pursue vlogging. And just before she arrived in LA, she got an offer from a major modeling agency and they said, so she's androgynous and they said they loved her androgyny and her Instagram photos. But when she saw the contract, she saw that they really wanted so much control and she wanted to keep her autonomy. So she decided not to take that up. She continued being a vlogger and it was really tough in the beginning because she had friends who were, you know, quite successful and she'd be there going I'm just the the one who's not doing so well but then it sort of it became better and better and she took off a lot more so she's acted she's produced and her YouTube shows are really interesting because they tell stories about gender and identity and love and what beauty means and it's all from this really interesting perspective of being a woman who people perceive as masculine you know or androgynous or all of these different words that seem to have all these connotations about beauty. So she says, I tell these stories because no one else is. No one else is sharing the kind of narrative I needed to see when I was nine years old, 13 years old, 21 years old. And I'd like to close that gap. I'd like to challenge the way we define beauty, challenge the way we identify ourselves and those around us, Mm -hmm. challenge the way we decide where we belong. I'd like to expose all of us to more honest stories, and I use storytelling as my means of doing so. Wow. She talks about her journey with androgyny and how it sort of changed and shifted. So she used to hate it when she was younger and then sort of had to grow into her looks. And she remembers she's um, she's a lesbian. And so she went to a gay bar with some of her friends and she was wearing a kind of mixed outfit where it was baggy jeans and a jersey which and heels. And she felt good. And then her friend told her, pick a side, be feminine or be masculine, like People aren't going to hit on you if you're if they're confused about what you are. Ugh. And, you know, and at the same time, her friend was well-meaning and she didn't feel like it was an attack on her. It just was like at that point in her life, it was really confusing for her and her identity and what it meant to be an androgynous woman. So it took her a really long time to accept it. And she was in college and fell in love with a woman who preferred more masculine women. And she changed her fashion from feminine to more butch because she really loved this person. But it was like even queer women wanted wanted her to decide if she was masculine or feminine. And so it was kind of a long journey to where she is, which is someone who really owns 
that she's androgynous and really seems really comfortable in it. So she said, being someone who isn't clearly masculine or feminine, I'm daily confronted with people who don't understand me. So I found I have to assert who I am every single day, from the way I dress to the art I make, all of it. It's so interesting to think about that being a daily thing too for people who do dress quite androgynous or don't identify as male or female identify somewhere else along the gender spectrum that would be because people feel like they can just ask you about that kind of stuff don't they like they feel like they have to know like are you a man or a woman that would be so hard that must bring up a lot of I guess fear as well, because if people feel like they can't place you, they suddenly like a weird hostility, I guess, that comes towards you, not just because they're hostile towards who you are and also because they're like, I just don't know where to place you and I have to. That must just be shitty, frankly. And it kind of reminds me of this documentary I was watching way back when. I think it's somewhere in Indonesia around that era, one of the Indonesian islands. They don't just see male and female. They have two other genders. It's a shame that is not in other cultures. That would just help with so many people growing up who don't feel like they must fit into one gender or another one it's just i guess language and just people's attitudes that just need to change which is that type of culture is is mimicked you know many times across the world it has a huge place in history too so it is hugely disappointing that we have come to live in this world where everyone fears what they don't know and what they know is male and female well it's interesting because it's even in the language we speak you know like to talk about someone you have to figure out their pronoun that's something that talking to genderqueer friends has been really interesting from their perspective how just every language thing we have especially for um romantic languages which have feminine masculine words and endings you know it's just our whole culture is surrounded by these gender spectrum extremes and and we don't have a lot of language for everyone in the middle and she talks about so much of that and how her journey has been and she kind of owns it now and rocks it it's interesting as well because she she's a lesbian she's androgynous she she is a black woman she is like there's so many different things that have impacted on her through society's perception of what those things mean And she's kind of had to figure out a way to find her niche and her own acceptance of herself when society tells her that so much of her should be different. So she's done a lot of projects. She's made a documentary about pregnant butch women, which is really interesting. She's done a 60 second series on what it's like to get dressed as a black, queer, androgynous woman. She has a sci-fi queer and brown web comic called Wedge, and it follows a powerful girl on a search for her first kiss. (laughs) <laughs> which is so cute. <laughs> she has a project called Tomboyish, which is about finding styles that are more androgynous for tomboys or for people who want to hold both feminine and masculine sides and represent that in how they dress. So I just want to finish with a quote. So she said, I hope other androgynous people, non-binary people, trans people, people of color, All people, really, are a little more bullish about the way our stories are told. The scripts out there, the opportunities out there, the executives out there aren't ready for us. But the good news is if you have a cell phone and a clear idea of your narrative, you probs won't need any of them anyway. Go make your own work, sis. I think that's one of the great things about YouTube because a lot of time mainstream media is not very representative. And within YouTube, there are all these little niche sort of subgroups that everyone's able to kind of find representation it's so many different types of representation and diversity like plus size women go on there and queer women go on there and people from you know people with disabilities people on the spectrum people on every spectrum that we've come up with there are problems with it there are still problems with um, recognition and all of that but the fact that there's a platform that you can go and put your creative ideas out there and use it as a platform for yourself is really exciting that's why it's so exciting it gives the narrative back to the people yeah 100 percent. that's how i learned makeup You know, I always thought that you had to be fake tanned and like bronze to look good with makeup. And then I went and I found a heap of super duper pale skinned people who look amazing (laughs) and don't look like ghosts, (laughs) which is what I always looked like as a child. I was like this punk ghost. (laughs) (laughs) 
It's helped us all. The bad behavior team really gives a thumbs up to YouTube. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. We really love having you every week and we will see you next week for another incredible episode. And we've got some really good plans in place, so stay tuned.